Turn out the lights, the party's over. They say that all good things must end. Call it a night, the season's over. At least the way we thought it'd go. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss. I have nothing witty or funny to introduce my my co-host, uh, Noah Storzinger. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm pissed off right now because I had a whole agenda. I had the entire episode planned, even though I don't write things down. I knew what we were going to talk about. And I was at school today, so I had no idea what was going on uh, for the majority of the day and heard everything on um, the ride home tonight. So co-host Noah Storzinger, you want to drop the bomb for us? Carl Anthony Towns. Big old uh, now, yep. Meniscus injury. We yep. heard both torn meniscus, meniscus injury, but he fucked up his knee. Yep, yep. And uh, you know, it, I know that. In in, I'm going to say one thing right now. Um, I am not a negative Minnesota sports fan because that's my nature. It was not how I was raised. You have to understand that the Minnesota teams that I follow have have groomed me have bred me to who I am um, because it's, it's – and, and I – you know, I, we're going to talk about all the details that come along with this, uh, but we already know that God hates us as Minnesota fans. And for whatever reason, the Timberwolves, compared to any other Minnesota team, like God deals with them like Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what I mean? He just wipe them off. It, so – there are some things that we, we have to touch upon because um, as my good friend Noah said, it's, it's, it's kind of up in the air right now about um, I heard the original report was that it is a torn meniscus. Uh, they're, they're, I believe they're getting a second opinion. They're going to know the results this evening. Um, some say if it's a partial tear or uh, it's something that can be rehabbed that, it might not be as serious as, as what we're thinking, but you're going from anywhere from two to eight weeks right now is, is what I'm thinking, right? Yep. So what I just read actually before we, we came on was, uh, you know, you can get your information from, from Wojanowski, from, yep. from Choms, whatever. Um, really the one that I trust the most is when it comes from John Krasinski. With yep, I heard him on the radio. Um, yep. So I think he was just on KFAN and he said yep. – um, there was a second opinion that it might actually not be as bad as, as we may think. Um, however, he's, he's going to miss some time. Obviously yep. I think back to 2018, Jimmy Butler, yep. uh, February 29th, I believe is when he, when he partially tore and he came back with three games left. Um, you know, we got 20 games left in the season. Um, you know, if he, if he tore the meniscus, I think you shelve him. I, I would, I don't yep. think he, he can come back, but um, I know that there's, there's ways that, you know, you can you can do things differently, but in the long term, it might not be the best for the knee. So it, it, it it's a weird situation right now. Uh, because 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 I was going to bring up Jimmy Butler as well. Now Butler actually had surgery, and that was in February. It was in late February. He vowed to come back um, for the playoffs, which he did. Um, and and Towns might be a different thing. And like they said, if they can rehab it. Or what, but like you said, he's gonna miss some time. And and here's the thing, regardless of if it's a tear, if he has surgery, and like if he has surgery, I'm thinking they said he could still be back for the playoffs, or maybe you know, if we were to get to the second round. But when Jimmy Butler had that, he said he would be back, but he wasn't the same player right away. And that, that playoff series against Houston was not it was not the Jimmy Butler that we knew. Um, and so uh, you're going to have to look at this as a definite line. And the, the thing that pisses me off so much is they didn't even give us a chance, at least how I feel right now, because I don't think that there is going to be any good news when it comes down the pike here. But what pisses me off is that they didn't even give me a chance to, to say what's going to happen. Like, because I've been down on the wolves for the last few weeks, last few months, and, you know, okay, we get to the playoffs and we'll see what happens. But I don't even think that we're going to get to that point where you have an honest 
uh, idea or you have an I you know when when they started the season you're like man this is a different team that we without towns it's a done it's a done deal you're not you're not you're not gonna get any kind of hope or man I, I really think that they got, it, it's just a done deal it is it's and we talked about it before about you only got two guys scoring right now you take the one of the big ones out we're gonna have to see what happens here folks you know, if Towns is out for the, the entirety of the season, no matter how far you go in the playoffs, you know, it'll it'll become a a Cinderella run, if you will, if they make it farther and farther and farther without Towns. But the shitty thing is, you know, you lose in the first round, second round, whatever, we will forever say, yeah. what would well, it have been like with Towns? Yep. And, and you might want to say – all right, uh, this was our year and we can hang our hat on that, but we'll never know because we'll never know what team, even with the healthy towns, we'll never know what playoff team we were going to see this year. And, and like I say, I'm not, I'm not trying to say this is it. It's an end. It's a done deal. Uh, but history tells us that, things don't go our way. And so I've, I've got to put it, put it down. Now I will say this, uh, this is, I know you like Finchie. And so, you know, here, here's his chance to, to figure things out because I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, we got the Pacers tonight. And in the next couple of weeks, you are going to get a real taste of what this team's going to look like. And so if, if you're putting your, your eggs in a Finch basket, okay. You would say, Man, I, I want to see if he's a hell of a coach and he's going to be able to figure out how to at least patchwork this if Towns can come back. But if he can't, are we going to be a complete shit show going into the playoffs and get swept in the first round, regardless of our seeding? Yeah, the, the benefit to that, I would think right now, is Finchie's got a lot of experience not having Towns. I mean, all of last year and this team was relatively similar a um, couple pieces here and there, but I mean, they at least they they know what it's been like before. Uh, Nas is going to step up. Uh, Anderson's going to going to have to do what he did last year. Um, and, and, and like I said, it's it's not new territory for them. I know that it it really hit that team hard, as from the interviews that I read. But um, they know what they got to do. I mean, it's it's all in their it's all in their hands right now to figure it out. Well, and and. I, I think you mentioned John Johnny Athletic, right? Um, and and he was saying that I think that the the mood in in the in the locker room was that they're very optimistic that this is 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 going isn't going to be as a big a um, a matzo ball as as we think. I just you know what I mean. I just I just don't think that that's going to be the case. Well, and it's it's completely realistic to to feel that way, or it's or it's a uh, you know you. You should feel that way. It sucks when you lose one of your star players, and any team would feel, you know, down about it. I mean, I, I like to hear that there's some optimism, at least, of hey, you know, we can we can figure it out. We we got this far. Um, you know, they were starting to figure it out. Not gonna lie, they were starting to figure it out last year without Towns. Um, yeah. He comes back, and it, it was a little shaky, just trying to work him back in. And that's my fear is you'll you know you you know it's only a 20 game stretch, you know, for the till the end of the year, but it would suck to, to, to figure it out. Maybe he comes back for a game or two before the playoffs and then it becomes clunky again, right before the most important right. game of the year. So um, it sucks. You know, you Towns has, has dealt with a lot of stuff in his career and it, it just, this one sucks and it sucks for the, for the year that the Wolves are having. Um, I think it shows you a little bit of kind of the, the shitty play down the, down the couple last couple of games. He's been playing through this Um it seems like it was a is a big enough injury for this to come out. So yeah, um, we'll see. Well, and that that's what I mean. Even even if we get him back, uh, I don't think that you're going to get All Star Carl Anthony Towns. And and that's that I guess is the pisser for me because we're we're just never going to know what this team would be capable of in the playoffs as the team that we've been following all year long. Um, it's just not going to be in in the cards this year. I don't think. No, and it it sucks because you would have liked to this for this team to to be the one seed and and be be doing this well. You would like to at least say, you know, if you lose in the playoffs, we did it to ourselves. It wasn't 
oh, we didn't have this player. We didn't have this. There was, you know, all these outside factors or, or injuries or what it may be. You'd like to at least just say, yeah, they fell short. But, but now, you know, like you said, for wherever they go, we'll forever, ever, ever say what this could have team, what this team could have been. We'll never know. Is it, is it harder for you? Is it more hurtful? Uh, if they were to lose in the first round as a healthy team that, you know, got, got the first, the number one seed all year, if they lost, would that be more devastating than them going in? They drop down to maybe a third or a fourth seed and then they get blown out. You know, they get, they, they, they drop it in four and it's because you have this disappointment or this, this this thought in the back of your head that man we just don't know and so now nobody's going to give us any street cred because it's we we just never got to prove like what would be more devastating uh if we just laid a big shit burger or the fact that we are not going to know because he's not going to be an option i think it'd be more devastating to to you know have a healthy team and lose in the first round I just agree. because we, you know it's especially if you're the one seed it's like hey man we we, let's go all the way. I mean, you're the one seed, hell. Um, you know, if you lose in the – if you're third, fourth seed, whatever it may be, um, you kind of felt it coming, I think. You you at least saw it coming a little more, and you you just – it sucks to be able to, you know, to have to say, like, shit, what could it have been? Yeah. Um, but I don't how, know. How I still like to make excuses now, which sucks. I know. I know it. I know it. How, how far do you think – because I, I believe in the Jimmy Butler year – I think they were like third, maybe fourth seed, and they dropped all the way down to eight. How far do you think that this team falls in the next 20 games if Towns is not available? I think this is where we're looking at the three seed. I think it's so the race is so close to the top three seeds right now. You've got um, you know, OKC, I think finishes one, honestly, this year right yeah. now with, with how they're doing. Um, I think Denver will finish two. I mean, they're they're a game behind us. No one ever – everyone forgets about Denver. They're still a yep. good team. I know. And um, we have to play them three times yet. Yeah. And then, you know, you got the Clippers. You got Sacramento. You got Phoenix. Uh, but I, I think this is a three seed. I think they – I do. I think they'll still win a good chunk of this 20-game stretch. Do. Well, I do. I, I think some guys – Because they're up. only – I think they're only two and a half games out from the four spot, though, right? Like, I mean, it <laughs> – it's it's not going to be pretty. I'll tell you that. I think they'll pull some wins out, but but you know the wins that we've had recently haven't been pretty, and that was well. Winning, we, so well, we haven't had that many wins in the last. Um, okay, so I I, I want to get your thoughts on this because uh, I heard I think I, I heard that car uh, slow mo is uh, is going to start for uh, Towns tonight, and originally I I was like, yep, that's what I would do as well because I don't think that Nas fits in. I, I like his energy off the bench, and that gives you a scoring option um, on the second team. But then as I thought about it, I'm like, now wait a minute, though. Then that means that your scoring on the starting squad is going to have to come from Anderson, Gobert, Conley, Jade McDaniels, and then uh, Anthony Edwards. That's not a good look either. And, and right, so right. I – I, okay, go ahead and go ahead and comment because I got another thing to add to that. Well, I was gonna say like guys got to step up. Jane's gonna have to. Jane's gonna have to score. He's gonna have to score all year, and he's he's just going to have to. Mike Conley's gonna have to hit some more shots. They're gonna have to work Gobert into the offense a little more. Conley's not there to score. He's just he's he's really right. just not gonna be there to score. He's gonna be there to defend, um, and kind of facilitate a little bit more. Um, I think the bench unit will still be fine. I think you see. I don't know if this is where you're getting to, but uh, I think they got to go sign Marcus Morris. He's, he started games for the Sixers this year. Uh, he would fit really well in that four spot. I still like Anderson coming off the bench. Um, but no, Jane, Jane's going to have to score. He, he's going to have to be that guy. Okay. Uh, so back to back to Finch, though, what, what I think is interesting and why is I, I said that, you know, we're going to really find out what kind of coach – and what he's made of in the next uh, a month or so. But I guess my question about this, whether how you incorporate Anderson, Nas, and we're going to talk about a couple other guys here in a minute. Uh, Finch doesn't tweak with the lineups very often. Everybody knows, 
like he's got a set role and how he wants to play his, his guys. So are we going to suddenly see a different Chris Finch because he's going to have to juggle because there's going to be nights that these things aren't going to be working out. And he's not a guy that tweaks the, the lineup. He, he just doesn't do it. So, so what, what do you think we're going to see out of, out of Chris Finch uh, with all of these obstacles in a way? I mean, I think he, he doesn't change the lineup in the sense of, I think successful teams have players that know their roles and know when they're going to play and how long they're going to play and exactly what they need to do. When you kind of switch things up, I think you're switching roles up a little bit. You're switching up expectations. Um, and I think that's what, what has made the Wolves so successful um, is players coming up and knowing exactly what they need to do when they come on the floor. He, there, there will be some more guys that play. I think, uh, you know, we've seen him mix in a little bit of Josh Minot minutes. And I think you're going to have to a little bit um, just with him being a four or a three uh, just to get a little bit of size in there. But I, I don't know how much he tweaks with it. I think you're, I mean, you obviously lose scoring, which sucks when you, when your offense isn't great right now. Um, but I, I, I don't, I don't see much of a difference unless we add some pieces here on the bio market. Um, Josh might not might get some run, well, maybe okay. a Luca Garza, but that's well. That's it. that was my next point. Was is there going to be a Luca uh, sighting this evening? Um, because Luca's the kind of guy that, and you know, I I've wanted to see what he's been, what he's capable of doing. He might be able to get you ten or twelve points. He's going to work hard offensively, but the downside is he cannot play any defense at all. And they they didn't even give him a shot against Portland the other night. And so, um, does that mean then? Because I believe we signed a uh, hey, NC State, my North Carolina State Wolfpack. We signed TJ Warren to a ten day contract, right? So, offensively, yes, that guy can put the ball in the basket. Um, will he be able to pick up on the defensive schemes um, the way that the Wolves have played? Because you, you're you looking at somebody else that is going to have to fill in in the paint. And and right now, it appears that they're not comfortable with Garza at all. Well, no, and and I I don't blame them. I, I know a lot of fans would, would really like to see him. I'd like to see him because, like you said, he can, he can get you 10, maybe 12 points. The issue is when this team's identity is defense, he has no part of that whatsoever. Um, I, I haven't really seen a lot of his defensive uh, prowess uh, in, in Iowa, but um, TJ Warren's a little bit of a different story. I think he can probably, at least if you get his head right, he'll defend a little bit. Um, he's not a guy that – he should be thankful for this opportunity. He wasn't getting right. anything, so I would hope he would lock down and, and play a little defense. But – TJ, I mean, if you remember, you called him Bubble Warren uh, when he was in the bubble with with Indiana. That guy can – he'll give you some points. He'll, he right. would absolutely will give you some points. Uh, he's got some size to him, might play well. But like you said, someone's going to have to play, and and, and someone's going to have to pick up some of those minutes. Well, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Their, their, first, uh, their first chance to see what this team's going to look like without Towns tonight against uh, – at the time of this taping – uh, is the Indiana Pacers, those fuckers don't play any defense at all, right? No, no defense, but it's it's you lose some size because you got Pascal Siakam now with Indiana as well as Miles Turner, um, which may which may be tougher for Kyle, but um, yeah, they don't play any defense. So you you would hope they maybe can get some some offensive flow here um, and and use that momentum to build into the the twenty game stretch that we're gonna hit. Okay. Uh, last question on this. We're, we are going to stick with the, with the Timberwolves, but um, what do you, what is your thoughts on are, are the Wolves players right now? You got a lot of young guys on that team. Uh, and we have talked about maturity levels. Uh, we've talked about just being professional is the Carl Anthony Towns situation? Do you find that they are going to be the "woe is me" and we're just gonna we're gonna just lay down because this is way too uh, this is way too devastating? Or do you think that they're actually going to be guys on this team that go next man up? We we have to prove that 
we are still a contender in this fight. We are still going to continue to show that we belong in the playoffs because I think it sounds out most people just write us off. They just write them off. So well, it, who do you think is going to show up as far as personnel player wise? Well, I, you know, I think everyone already has written us off. I mean, you hear towns going out as well, you know, that that's it. And a lot of fans, right. Rightfully so are, are, well, <laughs> there it goes. But I, I, I don't think they're the woe is me team. I think maybe years ago when, when Towns was really your only option, uh, when you had a lot more young guys, now we got some vets. You got Mike Conley, you got Kyle Anderson, uh, Rudy Gobert. These are guys that, that you know, in, in the interviews, it's we're, we're optimistic. We're ready to go and step up and play. I think Edwards is going to start to even hit another level because he knows he's going to have to score more. And okay. Then, you know, he's, well, he's gonna. He's. I think he's just gonna have to. Um, the guy I'd like to see is is Jade McDaniel's step up. Like I said, he's gonna have to score right, more. Right. So, and 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 what do you do if if they don't? You just you're just gonna say, well, it's just one of those things, and we got to work for next year. I mean, I don't even know how to how to grade this team after this news today. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to grade them on the game tonight and their next 10 or 20 games. I don't, I don't know how to, and when we get to the playoffs, I won't know how to say, well, uh, I can honestly give this assessment of this team right now. It's just, you know what I mean? It, it's to me, it's, it's too tough to call. Well, exactly. And like we said, like, we'll never, how, how mad, no matter how far they go, we'll always say, well, shit, what would it have been like yeah. if we added one of the best big men in the league? So now, now, did you get uh, the reference, the song that I sang uh, to start the start the uh, the podcast tonight? Did you get well, that reference? Well, I, I know the song, but okay, and yeah, that was Dandy Don Meredith saying that to Howard Cosell on Monday Night Football, and it was this very famous deal. Obviously, Dandy Don, a lot better singer than I am, but uh, okay. Um, well, I know I'm probably going to get flack for this next one. Uh, don't care. Uh, you have to be honest with me. And, you know, if I'm making too much out of this, that's fine. You can call me on it, but I don't think so. Uh, have you ever, at least in your lifetime, or even heard of in the history of the NBA, an NBA player missing tip off because he's not on the floor? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. When? Um, no, well, I haven't. Okay, I've heard everyone talking about. It. I've never heard of it. Never. I'll I'll send you some stuff. I can't think of it off the top of my Good. head. Well, you're gonna have to, my friend, because I've listened to this debate all week, and I have not heard one time. And even your guy Johnny Athletic said it never happens. Now, um, if you don't know what we're talking about, Anthony Edwards against Portland, uh, for whatever reason was not in the starting lineup. He wasn't even on the floor at at the time that the teams took it. I've never heard of that either. And am I going to make a big deal out of it? You're fucking right I am. And and if you think that I'm going over it, like I, I, like I say, I don't care because I deal in reality, okay? I deal, I work with kids. I've seen the future of our country and I mourn it. I weep for our future, okay? And this is what I'm going to say about Anthony Edwards. The, there's so many things that piss me off about this situation. And, and number one, it's like, okay, I remember when LeBron had to drop a deuce and took himself out of the game during the game. That's one thing. But Edward said, no, that wasn't it. He wasn't on the toilet. That's not why he missed. He lost track of time, but they never really said what the deal was. And my problem that I have with this is that more people should be, yeah, I love Anthony Edwards, but that was dumb fucking, that was dumb. That was, that was just stupid. And if you allow a guy whose ego obviously is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, okay, to do things like that, where it's, eh, it's not a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. All right. And the fact that, like, I'm wondering, was he pulling a Jim Morrison down in Miami where, you know, he was, uh, getting a little, he was sharing a Kodak moment with a girl in the shower right before the game, or did he really not know that the game starts? And I don't you can't use, oh, he's only 22. I don't know. I knew in the seventh grade when my game started, 
Okay. You can't say that this is just being immature or, or, or he's a young guy. It sucked. It was a bad look period facts. Well, you, you can't, uh, you got to show up on time to your job. And that that's, that's kind of the, the bottom line is, um, what I read is he's, he, there's, he's going through something personally, obviously just had a kid, but to me, I don't know how that affects being on the court. You know, it does it, not, it, it does not. I'll tell you this, that's fine. You're first born and that's all fine and new and whatever. I guarantee Anthony Edwards is not up till four in the morning playing rock a -bye. They, he got enough money to hire someone to do that for him or, but he's not involved in that at all. Okay. And so if, you allow, and this is, this is my point is that he is still our player. And so it, it's not the fact that his shit don't stink ever. You have every right as a fan, as a coach, as a, as a fan base to call him out and say that was ridiculous. Okay. And you want to compare yourself to MJ. I guarantee that ain't ever going to happen in a, in a, an entire career. He wouldn't even dream about something like that. And then I heard, and I was not aware of this, and, you know, people can go back and forth and say that I'm, I'm making too big of a deal about it. But I heard that at least half the games, he's not out there for starting lineup introductions. So they'll say, you know, from your emergency door, Anthony and Edwards, and he's not even on the, he's not even on the floor. And so what I'm, what I'm saying about this is that, if you allow a guy to buy into everything, yes, he is super talented, but there are still rules that apply to everybody. And if you don't call him on that and say, because I was pissed off when they asked Finch about it after the game, I wanted answers or at least for him to put him on blast instead. Oh, you got to ask him. You got never addressed it. That would have been a perfect time. I don't care how much you love the guy and how much you want him to be the face of the wolves. You say that cannot happen. Period. I, I, I it shows a little bit about the organization. I, it just a little bit of like you know, standards need to be up here, right? It, it, it's not. It's not a rules for thee, not for me type of thing. Um, if that you know, if you're if everyone needs to be on the floor for. Uh, the the starting lineup announcement. Everyone bees on the floor. I don't I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're MJ. I don't care if you're Kobe. I don't care if you're Kyle Anderson. Like you're on the floor. That's what we do. Fans pay a lot of money to see it come out and get announced. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's 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 getting uh getting I mean, immature. It's getting it's getting yeah. But well, it's time to stop that though. And somebody and the other thing is, can anybody explain to me because I coach basketball for a lot of years. Okay. But in junior high, but what, what I cannot understand is how many fucking people work for the wolves, whether it's assistant coaches or you have handlers uh, or you have spies in the rafters or whatever it is. Can anybody explain to me how you don't know that your best player is not on the floor when they're tipping the game off? You don't know where he is. Well, uh, what does that happen? If, if you're looking for someone to do it, I'll I'll do it. I'll gladly uh, be there the handler. I'll go. Hey, man, it's time to go. Great, I just made a hundred thousand dollars a year. I don't know, like just uh, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I, to your point, that I mean, come on. Seriously. Boggles my mind that they had no idea and no one was asking questions. Hey, dude, huh, it's two minutes to tip off. Where's Edwards? You know. And here is what I'm concerned by, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play this. You know, I um. I was officiating a game, not this year, um, a few years back. And, you know, I talk a little bit sometimes about entitlement or privilege or what, what these kids think they have coming to them when they haven't proved shit. Okay. And I was officiating a game a few years ago. Honestly, it, it was the school that I worked at and we were down by like something like 50 points. Right. And in the fourth quarter, one of, uh, one of the members of my school, hits a shot long distance and then does this as he's running down the court. And there was no three point line in the gym because the gym's this big. And I, I, you know, as an official, you are not supposed to say anything to a player 
especially you got a relationship with that player. But I just said, Hey man, look at the scoreboard. Really? You're, you're going to do that. Um, we have this year, I've seen it at game, the youth games um, where we have a kid that missed 12 shots and they're all bricks and finally hit one banked it in. Okay. And then, Walking down the court like he's all that. Meanwhile, all five guys on the other team have passed him up and have already laid it up before he even gets to half court. Now, my point with Anthony Edwards is if you don't call him out on this bullshit right now, where where is he ever going to draw the line on what is important and what's not as a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves? First, it starts with you're not out for, inter, uh, for introductions. Then you're not out for tip-off. How about if, as we saw against uh, the Clippers the other night, what was uh, the guy that got hot uh, for the Clippers? Uh, Powell. Norman, Norman Powell. He didn't get Powell. back on time. How about that one? How nonchalant he was. So when does Edwards start as people do? When everybody tells you how great you are, suddenly not everything applies to Anthony Edwards in his mind. So maybe a – Nobody really said anything except a, a couple angry people on podcasts or r- local radio shows. But I didn't hear from my coach, and I don't know what was said behind closed doors. But if they're going to let me get away with that, then maybe I don't play defense this time down the floor. Maybe I get 10 more technicals than I need to because it's all about me. Yeah, you follow me where I'm going with that. And that that does concern me because I love him, but you can see that guy has a huge, huge ego. Well, yeah. And and you know, it's I I try to think about putting myself in that spot. Like I I I my ego would be big too if I'm like if I'm that big. But I mean, honestly, Anthony Edwards can be so, 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 so good. And he can he controls where his career goes because there are a lot of people that you know maybe aren't aren't as as skilled as him but can be um very 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 good um but they you know they don't do the little things and they end up like a Dion Waiters-esque player who is just right. you know not it's like Anthony Edwards could be the best scorer uh, ever um you know he could be I don't know he controls where he's gonna go and he needs to do the little things and I don't know if it's someone that's to your point, you don't know what was said behind closed doors, but someone's got to call him out on it. Or he's if he doesn't realize it, I mean, really, the the, the trend starts to go a little lower. And you can, yeah, maybe he gives you 40, you know, not 45 points a night, but maybe he gives you 30, 30 points a game. But you remember Hassan Whiteside? Yes. Just empty, it's just empty stats at that point. And then, right. you know, you got to impact the games another way. And that starts with showing up on the floor well, when it's done. Because, because if you've noticed – He's been a slow starter the last few games, including the, I mean, in, in addition to the games that he doesn't show up on time for. So if, if you're late for a game or your head's not in the game to start out because you are somewhere else. And I can't even believe that they allow him to be somewhere else. Like during, uh, during introductions, he proved it against Portland, man. He he came out very slow against Portland. That game was a shit show as well. But you got to wonder what his focus is going into a game, especially when he gets those slow starts. I mean, I, I remember stories about uh, Isaiah, don't call me J.R. Ryder, in the old Target Center the bartenders who I knew used to tell me stories about Ryder coming in five minutes before tip off in his winter jacket with his uniform on underneath. And Oh, Hey guys, any quick run onto the floor from his car. I don't want that kind of an example. And, and I'm sorry, I know that we've used it a lot, but you need to grow the fuck up. You, you really do. It, it, there, there's nothing else I can say about that because at 22 at 12, you, that is a level of immaturity beyond going, Oh, he's a hothead. He shouldn't have got that technical or uh, that turnover was terrible. It's because of his young status. That is just fucking bullshit in my opinion. And if, if, if you think that I've taken it too far, I'm concentrating too much on it. Please, by all means, 
you know, let me let me know because no one else is talking about it. They're talking about it, but not like not like we're talking about it right now. Because they don't want to talk about the bad of your star player. And that's the thing. It's it it the the bad they don't they it's clouded right now. The vision is clouded and and it's yeah, it's hard to call out your best player and say, oh, that that's kind of concerning to see. Uh, because we all want Anthony Edwards to be the the, the god of, of of Minnesota basketball right now, and it's hard to call it out. And and you know he's got professional in his name. He he needs to to be a professional. To your point, you can use young, and we've used it. You know he's young. We we've used that before. But there's things that you learn at a young age, like being on time. That can, right. Come on, well, come on. Everyone does. Uh, okay. But see, that's that's kind of the point that I wanted to make tonight was that we should not be scared of calling a 22-year-old man on things that should be just common sense, okay? And yeah, but what? I'm afraid of hurting fucking Anthony Edwards' feelings. He had no care for my feelings as a fan or as coach or his teammates by, by not showing up. So, I mean, I'm sorry you cannot handle these guys with, like I said, the pillow gloves, they have to know, or they're just going to take it to another extreme is what I believe. And, and that's, uh, that's concerning to me, man. It really is. He'll figure it out. I think he will. Okay. Um, last thing I want to bring up about the wolves, cause, uh, we didn't get to the last time, but this is why it's, you know, so devastating and disappointing about, um, the news tonight. Like, so, you know the Phil Jackson rule, right? You win 40 games yep. before you lose 20 games, which the Wolves did accomplish this year. But, the you know, the point when I was being negative about the way that we've been playing and whatnot, there's three other teams that, that got the Phil Jackson rule this year. Um, and so, I mean, I, would, I, I couldn't believe it. I heard it. I was like, wait a minute, 90% of teams in the NBA that have won 40 games before they lost 20 have won an NBA championship. And I'm like – that's not a good deal for the Wolves because there's four teams this year that did that. Um, but, you know, before the whole Towns thing came about, I was like, you looked at Boston and the Wolves before uh, before the year change, and I was like, yeah, I think the Wolves are better than Boston, man, a seven-game series. The Celtics have just continued to go up, 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 where the Wolves have not. They have just kind of – they just kind of stay, stay – stand pat. And, and so uh, that is what I, I really feel cheated about in this whole scheme of things is that we're never going to know uh, out of those four teams who is the Phil Jack because I don't feel like the Wolves are getting a, an honest shake right now. Well, they they matched up with Towns. They matched up so, so well with teams like Boston, the OKC, uh, the Clippers. Now, I mean – they just flat out don't like it, it's just incredible how much towns does to a team and and the matchup just isn't there i mean boston i think would would run us quite a bit right now without yeah. towns and, and unless i see some completely different in this 20 games we're gonna just have to hope at this point right right um you know i hate to hate to to quote a, a very famous movie but i i do feel like the plane is crashing into the mountains right now, you know, but, but you know what, Johnny's been wrong before. I hope I am wrong. Um, but you know, you, you get, uh, you get strong feelings sometimes and that's, um, that's the way I feel last basketball question I wanted, um, because we, we briefly talked about Caitlin Clark, who is in the cities right now, uh, for the women's big 10 tournament and Hey, the women gophers, they won one. And they're, they're, they're playing a night again. Um, but we talked about Caitlin Clark um, breaking pistol Pete Maravich's uh, record. And I still give her props all the way across the board. Um, the only detail I left out because I, I, I'd forgotten about it. Um, we mentioned, you know, that people were saying, well, no, you're not going to, you you can't really compare it because pistol Pete never had the three point line. And I was like, nope, that's, that's ridiculous. And then I don't know if you knew this, uh, but uh, the NCAA did not allow freshmen to play in varsity basketball games at the time. Pistol Pete Maravich was there, so he only played three years. But Caitlin Clark only going to play three years, so you can you can forget that argument as well. But here's one I bet you were not aware of: there was no shot clock 
when Pistol Pete Maravich played. And so does that now kind of turn the tables a little bit? Because if you think about what a shot clock does and how, you know, you got teams, well, Pete Maravich averaged 40 points a game. All we got to do is sit on the ball. You know what I mean? Like, does that, does that part of it give those folks, I, I guess, uh, reason to say it's, it's like comparing a- apples to oranges. I think she still completely deserves. I agree. The record. I, I, I really, yeah. I mean, you know, no shot clock. You, you'll get more possessions with the, with the, with the shot clock and everything, but um, I don't know. The game's a little different too. And, and, I just think it's it's cool for for women's basketball to have that kind of icon there. Um, so yeah, she absolutely deserves it. I don't. I, that, how long ago was was Pistol Pete? Uh, that was what is it, early seventy. Oh, he was in the NBA, I think, in the early seventies. Um, it, it's just to me, it what was that like, fifty years now. Oh my gosh! Like, yeah, thanks. That's I yeah, I saying, was but uh, <laughs> fifty years. Um, yeah, but. No one has really come close, at least in and now you're I, you're never going to see it in the men's at the men's level uh, because those fuckers aren't ever going to play more than two years at college, so you'll you'll never see. I mean, at least the the men's record is probably untouchable. As we were talking about different records and how no one's going to break them in the pros, but I don't think you you will see it in college college basketball again, at least in the men's level and maybe the women's. I mean, uh, Caitlin Clark is a stud at for sure, but but did. I'm just trying to think. I I don't. I really don't know Caitlin Clark's story before even last year. Did she yeah, that's, come out of nowhere? Yeah, that's the first I had heard of her was last year when, and uh, I was actually in Des Moines um, when they they played that big game. Was at LSU? Did that's who they lost yeah, to? Yeah. I was actually in Des Moines, and I mean, great for women's basketball. I mean, I've never seen the bars packed. For, for women's athletics. So that I, I thought it was cool, but I really did not know anything about Caitlin Clark until last year either. And that's part of it is that I, I just don't watch women's basketball. That doesn't mean that I'm down on women's basketball or anything like that. It's just, it's just not, I've already got too much going on. You know what I mean? So um, one other thing uh, that we, we talked, we, we brushed on it and um, just in the last three days, it seems like everybody is saying, what I'm hearing from everybody is that it's pretty much a done deal that cousins is going to be gone. Um, and I, I think that it, it probably will be the Atlanta Falcons um, where, where he lands. Um, but there was an interesting point. Uh, Brian Billick was on a local um, show this afternoon while I was driving home. And, um, and I think it was Brian Billick that brought up this point. And I think it was something that I touched upon uh, when we talked on Monday uh, with Cousins, and I said, you know, maybe it's time to just kind of figure things out for the future in the next few years. And if we cut ties with Cousins, that's not going to break my heart. Um, the interesting bit, thing that Billick brought up when talking about re-signing Cousins or who do you go to if you get someone in the draft or you bring in um, a, a, a free agent or you trade for somebody uh, was that, you have a decision as the Vikings, whether it's KOC or, or, or management, uh, you have a decision to make when it comes to cousins, because are you fine with, because this is what Brian Billick said. Are you fine with Kirk cousins, keeping the Vikings relevant enough, but you honestly don't think you're going to win a super bowl with him. And I think that that was a sentiment that a lot of people had about cousins is that he, He's, he's pretty good, but he's not probably going to win you a Super Bowl. And now he's on the backside. You know, he's this is his last contract probably that he's going to sign. Um, coming off an injury, are you are you really want to go for two more years with him being just good enough not to win you a Super Bowl, or do you want to just cut it, cut it loose and go with whatever you're doing? And then that would mean – I don't think Russell Wilson. I don't think Tannenhill. Uh, I don't think Baker Mayfield. I am. I don't want Justin Justin Fields either. So then you have to you have to say that we're going to put, or maybe you still have a bridge going into a rookie quarterback in a couple of years. 
Um, what, what do you think about that? I mean, as far as the Cousins and, and the idea that he's just good enough to get you close, but he's never going to win you a championship. So maybe the time is right. I think he can absolutely still win you a championship. I, I think he's, I, I think he's, I think he's that kind of quarterback. Um, as far as his contract and everything, I mean, you know, you, you sign him for that much money. It, it handicaps you to, to go out and get, get other guys. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you were already going to pay Justin Jefferson a shitload of money. You were already potentially going to pay Daniil Hunter a shitload of money. Um, I think having a good quarterback puts you in an even better spot to, to win a championship. I mean, you see there are good quarterbacks that win championships. Right. Um, and yes, I mean, you can go with the rookie um, and you can, you can sign whoever you want. I don't know. Um, but you know, it doesn't give you the best chance to win. Um, so I'm What's still on the fence. I, what? What's your thoughts on Justin Fields? If it's for a year and he's a bridge quarterback, sure. Sure. I'll say fuck it for a year. <laughs> I'll say fuck it for a year. I mean, well, and now here's – because here's what they were talking about. Billick was talking about with this local local guy today was, do you take a, a, a chance on Justin Fields? Because is it a fact that Justin Fields just sucks or – the Chicago Bears are like the Cleveland Browns, and they just they just created that because they're so bad that they that they created it, and that he might in the right scheme or the right coach or the right the right playing environment, he might actually be a lot better because he did show glimpses and he showed flashes with the Bears. That but but you know how I feel about that kind of a quarterback, so. Well, and that's, and that's, you know, Justin Fields, I think is a, just a, a much better version of a Josh Dobbs, I guess, in the sense of way he better, can, way he better, can really run. And, and, you know, if you really think about it, I mean, he, he's got the legs. Absolutely. Um, he probably won't have a run game, but he'll have some of the best wide receivers in the game to throw oh, to. And, and it's what do you just rolled his ankle. <laughs> oh um, man i just can't. why does god hate us so much i don't get it wait a minute hold on the game what? the game started already indiana man Is it what it's like time zone. oh and i was wondering would edwards how's he gonna figure out the time zones now if nobody's telling him he yeah uh so the game just started. Did he? Yes. Yes. Jump? And he already rolled his ankle. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, he'll come running back in, in another quarter from the locker room. They'll give him the good stuff and he'll come back. But, um, Justin Fields, he, uh, oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay. I, I know I, I'll follow up with that. Cause I know where we're at. Uh, does Justin Fields, uh, does he solve your running game situation, your your running game problem situation? And does he have enough to be able to throw the ball to Justin Jefferson accurately? I mean, accurately is one. I mean, we've seen Dobbs throw him hospital passes. I mean, he'll he'll catch him. He'll catch him. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Um, but I mean, really, you're gonna. I think if you get a, get a oh, I almost said Josh Dobbs. If you get a Justin Fields, um. I mean, you'll need to boost the whole line. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you'll need to create holes for him anyways. Um, does he solve your running game? I mean, no, I, I will say it was fun to watch Josh Dobbs run right. because it never happened with, with Minnesota quarterbacks. But like I said, I mean, I know that the bears are not seeing the market that they thought they would get for Justin Fields. So if you could get him on the cheap for a year, He's not going to mentor your rookie quarterback, but at least your rookie quarterback can learn the system for a year, get get some, uh, get his feet wet a little bit. I don't well, know. and that, that that was the thing with Baker Mayfield is that y you're not you're not going to get him on a one year deal. You know what I mean? So I'm not willing to pay that dude a, a shit ton of money on on you know what I mean? And and so um, I don't know what how many years are left on, on Fields contract? Cause one year. Okay. 
So that that could be, but I mean, I mean, Justin Fields, the type of quarterback, he might run for a hundred yards in a game. All right. And he, he has the potential of being able to rip off a 78 yarder. Uh, but I don't think that you can rely on that as a game plan going in. Um, I think that you have to keep the defense honest and, and you're, you're going to have to, and I don't know if, if Chandler is going to be, Oh, geez, it just doesn't look good. He rolled both, both of them. How do you roll I, both of them? He came down weird on, his right for oh jeez, yeah he yeah he got both of them. He 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 rolled his first on his plant step, and then when he came down on his other one, he came down on the pacer's foot and rolled. He he got both of them. This is unbelievable. It just um all right. We might have to because I, I, I might have to go check this out. Okay, so um I apologize, Vikings fans, that we haven't been able to really get into because I, I've just been so, uh, you know, consumed with everything. Uh, I, I apologize. That's all we've really been talking about is the wolves. Um, shoot. I, I smoked about a half a pack of cigarettes just on the way home, just to kind of deal with this. And that's where I'm headed right now. Um, man, I, I guess <laughs> one, uh, one last thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, entire free agency, We'll go to baseball very quickly um, because I, I was really surprised by this. Um, you know, Bellinger thought he was going to get this huge, huge contract, and really he didn't. He got, what, about $30 mil a year? Yep. But he thought he was going to get something like 300000 or something like that, right? Or three hundred mil or something. I don't know what he it was. He wanted hundred fifty mil, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't work out. Blake Snell is still not signed. But did you see who the Washington Nationals signed today? Eddie, 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 Eddie yeah. Rosario, four million dollars a year. It's uh, a minor league deal too. Yeah. Yep, and and that really because I mean I know that you know I remember what it was Lance Lynn that held out or that didn't hold he held out but then nobody just signed him you know and then I, I think it was there was like a month into the season before he came out. Um, that was a uh, I know you're tight. Well, Kimbrel did that and then. Uh, I thought Lance Lynn did too. No, I, it was um, uh, Jake Arietta. Okay, okay. Um, I, I'm just surprised because in in an age of inflated contracts that are just ridiculous, uh, I cause I didn't think that Rosario had a terrible year last year. He hit like 23 home runs, yeah. brought in like 67. He had an OPS over 700. I mean that that warrants a major league contract in my opinion, not a minor league deal. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's interesting. And I think, but I still think he's making more than Joey Gallo though. Right. Like, cause that, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Washington gave more, gave more to Gallo than any Rosario. Let me find Come out on. here. No. <laughs> the fact that it's a <laughs> Joey Gallo is making $5 million this year. Has the world, whole world gone crazy? I mean, am I the only one that gives a shit about the rules anymore? I okay. Well, well, let's see. Let's see. Hold on, Eddie Rosario. He's uh, making four four mil. Is it four? It's four. I, I just read it about an hour ago. I'm pretty sure it's four mil. But uh, wow, wow, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, well, good luck with that, Nationals. Uh, that uh, that that should be great. Uh, I was supposed to do this Monday night. We have not talked about a lot of hockey, and uh, I apologize for that. Um, the Wild still pretty bad. Uh, they do have a new Russian kid coming in. Uh, that they say when all the all the paperwork gets signed, and uh, you know he uh, he's done uh, killing Ukrainians and whatnot. He he's going to get here. Uh, I believe Garen said that he is going to make an impact right away. Uh, and it would be kind of nice to have that Russian camaraderie uh, between him and uh, Kirill the Thrill. Um, whether or not he is allowed to come to this country by the time that we need him, I, I don't know. I can't even pronounce his name. Uh, to me, I don't know how long it will take for me to, uh, to understand how to pronounce his name. But uh, that's one thing. The other thing, uh, boys, high school state tournament. 
uh, is this weekend. And, and there, I still have friends who are 50 years old. No, that may, I've never been to the state high school tournament there. I still have friends who are 50 years old that make it a big deal. They love the atmosphere. Um, they just, they, they love going for a whole day. Um, I was supposed to, I, I told my buddy that I would at least make reference to it because I believe Minnetonka was undefeated all season and they lost to Chan Hassan. And the only reason I know that is because Chan Hassan knocked off Shakopee and I have friends uh, who were former players for Shakopee hockey program, but they Chan Hassan is, and I believe Chan Hassan won uh, this morning. Um, I don't think it was close either. I think it was like seven zero. They built, uh, uh, they beat, uh, I think the Rochester conglomerate. Um, so anyways, I was supposed to give uh, a salute to Chan Hassan because I, I mean, it might even be their first time in the state tournament. Um, and they were a giant killer. So uh, I don't care as long as he dino loses, um, it can go anyway. Well, I, I love when Minnetonka loses. I like, I played for Shockby. So very familiar with, with Minnetonka, not a fan. Right. What the hell's a skipper? What the hell's a skipper? Right. I, okay. Um, all right. Well, oh, Anthony Edwards back on the court. That's what, what did I, I tell you. <laughs> that's where we're going to leave it. Oh, man. I, I don't know if I would have been able to handle that, man. Um, all right. Well, as Hulk Hogan used to say, ladies and gentlemen, eat your vitamins, say your prayers because we need them uh, right now. For Noah Storzing, your own Johnny Boss, you've been watching the show to be named later podcast. Sorry about being so negative. We'll see you next time.